As per the ayat of Mawadda, the ayat that I, I have just recited. So, we have gathered here to celebrate the birth anniversary of this Adeem, this great Bibi, Janab Zainab Kubra, Salamullah Alayha. And this is why we have to a little bit try to ponder over the life of this Bibi. Because this Bibi, Bibi deserves this. Because she has presented a unique kind of kirdar, unique kind of character, which is not found even in uh, the ladies of Ahlul Bayt salam. Only Bibi Janabe Fatima Tuz Zahra Salamullah Alayha. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa is the one who is superior to Janab Zainab Kubra alayha. Otherwise, Janab uh, Zainab Kubra is only second to Bibi Fatima Zahra alayha. No other Bibi can equal uh, in Fadila, Fadail, Wilaya, love, character, sacrifice to this Bibi, uh, Adin Bibi, Janab Zainab Kubra alayha. Okay, before we discuss the life of this Bibi, I would like to talk about some very important uh, rights of women in Islam. Okay, usually we discuss the rights of men all the time, but we do not give a lot of importance to the rights of women in Islam. And this is why we receive sometimes a lot of criticism uh, from other uh, religions, from other uh, you know, secular groups, etc. They blame us not uh, blame us for not respecting the uh, the women's rights, etc. Whereas this is not true. This is completely false, and uh, it is not uh, found in Islamic, uh, you can say, uh, scriptures or books whereby a woman has been suppressed or a woman has been uh, subjugated, etc. No. We don't have like uh, this uh, kind of uh, you know behavior or treatment for uh, or against women, uh, but culturally, according to probably following our uh, culture, because of our culture, sometimes we treat women uh, in a improper way. 
that is that is where we can say yes we accept that we agree sometimes we do not give them you know their place their due place that they deserve that is true but this is not because of being a muslim no this is because of being uh, you know an adherent of a particular culture because islam has made men and women equal islam has made them equal so there is an ayah in the holy quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, do not compete against one another yani allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing men and women and he's saying do not compete against one another do not fight against one another for what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you because the men will get reward for what they do and the women will get the reward for what they do so there should not be any kind of friction there, there should not be any kind of tension between uh, men and women in the society because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that this is going to happen and even you can say before the advent of uh, islam there was this kind of tension between men and women and they were uh, you know put to a lot of uh, you can say uh, subjugation or uh, they, they were treated as inferior they were treated as in, in even some cultures and religions uh, they were treated as animals they did not uh, get even the uh, you know status of a human normal human being so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that women would be treated in this in that way so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent down this ayah 1400 years ago and he said that there should not be any kind of friction there should not be any kind of fight between men and women hmm? they should not you know women should not uh, see themselves as superior and men should not also see themselves as superior or uh, you know boss of women no it's not like that when it comes to uh, you know giving the status respect etc both are equal in islam the Quran, the Holy Quran, I, I will give you, inshallah, certain examples from the Holy Quran, uh, inshallah, and we'll see where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving uh, the women equal rights, equal status, equal rank, uh, you know, to, to, to men. So, this is first, because, you know, in this uh, era, it is called era of uh, liberation uh, of women, you know. Freedom for women. And, he, and, and if you go to the West, you will see every now and then they come up with this uh, freedom, um, liberation of women, etc. Women's rights, etc., etc. Human rights, children's rights. And this is where these people try to find some loopholes in our religious scriptures sometimes or in our religious laws and they want they try to uh, you know exploit these uh, loopholes they try to exploit these loopholes and they make them an excuse to bash islam or insult islam or our uh, quran but those loopholes are not actually loopholes they are there are things taken out of context. There are things take, taken out of context because there is no loophole in our, uh, you can say, religion or especially in the Holy Quran. You cannot find anything uh, which is, uh, you know, which would put us in a embarrassing, in an embarrassing situation. No, there is nothing like that. Okay, sometimes we may not understand the meaning of a particular ayah or riwayah. That's another thing. That is our weakness, not the weakness of the Holy Quran. We fail, actually, we fail to understand the Holy Quran or explain the Holy Quran to others. So, this is very important. So, we have to come back to, to the Holy Quran and see what Islam, uh, you know, is, uh, talks about uh, women and, and their, uh, their rights etc <coughs> so for example these people 
you know, I, I spoke about the cultural, being a follower of a particular uh, culture. You know, these people exploit this, uh, uh, you can say this, this point, this issue. You know, you know they, they do not talk about, you know, Islam, the, the real Islam. They do not talk about the, the real book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would talk about the character of Muslims. And they will take the you know, characters of some bad Muslims and would you know, take that an example of, uh, uh, of uh, something as if that is Islam, actually. As if that is Islam. So these people are looking for this kind of loopholes, I can say. But this is very important that we pay attention here. That this is injustice. This is unfair. This is unfair. If you look at the you know, character of a segment of a community or religious communities, etc., and then we pick and choose hmm, from them, those who are bad, those who are not good. And then we blame the, the religion, the religion that they are following for, for their bad or, or evil uh, deeds. And this is why uh, this media is, uh, is uh, using these kind of points and they tarnish the image of uh, Islam, they tarnish the image of the Holy Quran, they, you know, they incite uh, in Islamophobia in the West. It's, it's a normal thing, kind of. Now it has become a normal thing that they fuel the society with Islamophobia. They, uh, you know, make Muslims look like animals. You know, certain Muslims are doing animalistic things. That is uh, true, even, you know. Uh, in Syria, you would have seen uh, Muslims killing other Muslims, and they are being uh, worse than even animals in, 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 in doing that. But could, uh, could we say that that is uh, true Islam? Can we say that it is Islam, they are representing the true picture of Islam? No. But unfortunately in the media, when they talk about it, they say, this, these are Muslims, these are the true Muslims, these are the representatives of Muslims, or Islam, or the Holy Quran. So this is, if we do that, we are actually destroying the society. And unfortunately, there are people who are bent on destroying the, uh, not only one society, actually the, the whole world. You know, they, they want to control the whole world. They want to, uh, you know, uh, they have their own agendas, you know. So, if we take this as, as, an, uh, as a criteria, if we take it as a criteria, we can do the same uh, with other uh, societies or with their other religions. For example, if we try to look for some loopholes in, in Christianity, we would find many, many loopholes. We would find many, many weaknesses in their scriptures. If we look at the Judaism, if we look at uh, Hinduism, we will find certain things which do not make sense at all. But should we, you know, blame the religion for, for, uh, uh, for, for those loopholes? Or if a pers particular person is being bad, we should say that this person is bad. But unfortunately, when it comes to Islam, uh, this is like that. It is, uh, you know, they, they treat Islam as if Islam is a scapegoat uh, for, uh, you know, uh, for whatever malice or whatever evil propaganda they want to do, they use the name of Islam and they, they do. Okay, now, we were talking about gender equality in Islam. First of all, let me make it very, very clear. There is no value for being a male or female in Islam. There is no value. We cannot say, because I am a man, I am superior to, to women. Because I am a man, I am boss of, 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 of the women, etc. No. 
This is not a virtue, this is not a fazila. There is no fazila in being a man or a woman. They are both equal when it comes to gender. They are both equal. Okay, so, where is the difference? And inshallah, I want to give you some examples as I said from the Holy Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has specifically sent down certain ayat and uh, addressing men and women both at the same time so that women should not feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always talking using the masculine, uh, you can say, phrase or masculine tone because it was a practice at that time. Even now, uh, it's a practice when we are talking about uh, some, uh, some neutral topics, we use, uh, we use uh, you know, masculine gender. It is masculine language I, I, I'm talking about, masculine language. But uh, still, it, it was something which was uh, uh, acceptable at that time. But still, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a point and he went out of way and he revealed certain ayat whereby he sent some ayat where, where he differentiated this, uh, uh, differentiated between men and women. And he used sigas, special words for men and women. Men and women. Inshallah, that I will give you uh, later. The, so there, there are many, many ayat, not just one ayat. And I'm sure you have, uh, you have come across those ayat many, many times in your uh, you know, recitation when you are, uh, whenever you have been reciting the Holy Quran. So, and in those ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, says, when it comes to, when we talk about iman, when, it, when we talk about spirituality, when we talk about taqwa, when we talk about seeking knowledge, when we talk about other virtues, there is no difference between a man and a woman. And it has been very beautifully explained by uh, two very great scholars. One is uh, Ayatollah Mutari. Ayatollah Mutari has, expl has explained it in a very, very beautiful way. He says uh, in his book, Women's Rights, and, and when he talks about difference between equality and similarity, he says that the problem with the Western culture is that it considers equality similar to um, similarity. E equality is equal to similarity. Whereas equality and similarity are two different things. We could be equal, but we may not be similar. We could be equal. In humanity, in humanity, we are all equals, but we are not similar. Each and every human being is different from other. Nobody is similar in the whole wide world. Even the twins are not, not similar. Maybe similar in, in, in looks, but if you look at their finger prints, etc. They are not similar. They are different. Their characters, their habits, their ways of living life and so many other things are different from each other. So equality is not similarity. So now, this is first. Equality is not similarity. So when we talk about men and women, Islam says they are equal. They are equal, but they are not similar. They are not similar. Each one of them has a different role to play. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them for that particular purpose and given them their even physical shape and physical body according to their needs and their roles that they have, they are supposed to play in their lives. So they are equal in humanity and they must be treated equally. But they are not similar. Okay. So equality is not similarity. Okay. There is another uh, scholar, Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli. And he talks about this issue in a different way. He says, Virtues of human being and the duties of human beings are two different things. 
virtues are not duties virtues are not duties and duties are not virtues okay virtue yani fazilat so whenever you talk about the virtues of a human being there is absolutely no difference between a man and a woman okay i said virtues and uh, duties are two different things so when it comes to fadila status rank virtues both men and women are equal but when it comes to duties they might have different duties so whenever you see difference in islamic laws it has to do with virtue with uh, it has to do with duties and not with fadail or fadila and virtues you know when islam says a woman should do this should stay at uh, should say uh, inside house should not go out let's say for example let's, let's take this and uh, as an example okay it is not talking about fadilat of a woman because uh, a woman is inferior that's why she has to stay home no it's not like that she has different duties which men don't have when have du- men have duties outside the house and women have duties inside the house so duties are different but because of these duties we cannot say that a woman is uh, inferior to a man or a man is a uh, is inferior to a woman so and if you if you can you know uh, understand this concept it becomes very very easy for us to understand <coughs> what is what islam is and we should actually try to share it with the with the others also we should try to explain to them that islam gives women equal status equal uh, equality in fadila but but when it comes to duties they are two different individuals they have different duties to perform in their lives okay now look at the ayah of surah al ahzab ayah number 35 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says innal muslimina wal muslimat yeah, he could have said innal muslimin and it would have been enough because when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all the muslims so women are automatically included but he went out of his way and he said no i will use specific words for for women also so that they do not feel uh, that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is treating them differently no so he says innal muslimina wal muslima wal mu'minina wal mu'mina wal qanitina wal qanita was sadiqina was sadiqat was sabirina was sabirat wal khashiina wal khashiat wal mutasaddiqina wal mutasaddiqat was saimina was saimat wal hafidina fujuhum wal hafidat wal zakirina allah kathiran wal zakirat a'adda allah lahum maghfiratan wa ajran azima let me read the translation for you and it is now up to you to judge to decide whether allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treating women differently from uh, men or they are equal you know he's saying indeed the muslim men and the muslim uh, women the believing men and believing women the obedient men and obedient women the truthful men and truthful women the patient men and patient women the humble men and humble women the charitable men and charitable women the fasting men the fasting and fasting women the men who guard uh, you know their private private parts and the women who do so and the men who remember allah often and the women who do so for them allah has prepared forgiveness and great reward for them allah has pre- prepared forgiveness and great reward for both of them for men and women do you see any kind of differentiation here in any in treatment no allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is expecting the same kind of behavior character from men and women 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expect men to be Muslims and women to be also Muslim. He expects them to have Iman, both of them. He expects them to have, uh, you know, to be truthful. Sadiq, Sabir, patient, Khashir, Mutasadiq, any charitable, etc., etc. So there is no difference. Okay. If we create difference in our society because of some cultural reasons, can we blame Islam for that? Because we are treating our women differently. And could we blame Islam for that? No, it's not like that. We have not actually learned the, the, the or you can say, fully embraced the Islamic culture. We have not embraced. We are under, you know, sometimes under the effect of, um, we can say, Indian culture, under the, you can say, so many other cultures, West, Western culture, etc. Sometimes, you know, we make decisions or take decisions because of our cultural re reasons, not our religious reasons. Because of, and you know, Islam is not the, the, the force that rises in a particular direction. It is our culture, in many cases, that drives us in a particular direction. So it is not the Islam that we can blame or we should blame. No, it's, uh, no. It is us who, sh who should be blamed for uh, the problems, of, uh, uh, problems in our society or Muslim society. Okay, now we come to the fadilat of Bibi Janabi Zainabi Kubra, Salaamu Alaikum 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 Okay, first of all, let's look at the uh, name of Bibi Zainab Salaamu Alaikum Zain Ab. Zain Ab is actually compound. It is made of two words. It's not one word. Zain plus Ab. Zain and Ab. Zain means uh, beauty and Ab means father. You, Alhamdulillah, you already know. So the first granddaughter of Hazrat Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Gets the name of Zeenat, Zeenat e Ab. Yani Zeenat, beauty or embellishment for her father. You know? So it is mentioned that Imam Ali al Islam, and this name is uh, not. And she was, she was not named by the Holy Prophet, she was not named by Imam Ali, she was not named by any individual uh, from this earth. She was named, hmm? she was named by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Because when she was born, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not present. He was, he was not in Medina. He had gone for some suffer. And Imam Ali, the Bibi Fatima Zahra Salaam Lala said to Imam Ali alayhi salam, we have been blessed with this daughter, please give her a name. He said, the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more deserving for that. So the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he came back, he said, you have preferred me over you, so I prefer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over myself. So, Hazrat Jibreel salam came with this name, Zainab. And Muhammad salam liked this name so much to the extent that he named all the daughters from Bibi, Zain Bibi Fatima Zahra salam alayha, Zainab. He had two daughters from Bibi Zahra salam alayha, and both were named Zainab. Zainab al-Kubra. Zainab is Sughra. Janab Bibi Umm Kulthum, it is not her name. Umm Kulthum is not her name. It is Kunniya. Her name is Zainab. Zainab is Sughra. Like Fatima Kubra, Fatima Sughra. This, is, this was a practice that even Imam Hussain had. He used to name all his sons as Ali and all his daughters as Fatima. All his daughters. Only distinction 
was Zainab uh, Fatima Sughra, Fatima Kubra, uh, Ali Al Akbar, Ali Al Asghar, Ali Al Awsat, etc., etc. Otherwise, all the children of Imam Hussein Salam had one name. Ali Al Asghar, you, you can see Ali Al Akbar, Imam Ali Zain Al Abdin, etc., etc. So, this was the same with this Bibi. So, Bibi Janab Zainab Kubra was embellishment for her father. Now, I want to talk about the very, very great fazilat of Bibi Fatima, Bibi Zainab Kubra. Salam alaikum. Salwat alaikum. Muhammad alaikum. Muhammad alaikum. Muhammad alaikum. Now we have now understood difference, the difference between fazilat, virtue, and duty. Now we have understood duty is not a virtue. Duty is not a virtue. I may have some certain duty, but it's not a virtue. It is not a fadila. Okay? So they say, according to Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli, he said, if you look at the imamat, nubuwat, and risalat, etc., these positions are duties, not fadila. These are duties. Nubuwat is a duty. Responsibility. Imamat is a duty and responsibility. Hmm? So, because of Imamat, Nubuwat, and Risalat, uh, because uh, certain individuals like our Prophet, like uh, Imam Ali and other Aim al Islam, they were given these duties. These, these, these duties are not their Fadila. Their Fadila, their Fadila, is because of their wilaya. Wilaya is fadila. You understand? Wilaya is because of the amal, because of the kirdar of an individual. Because of the kirdar of an individual. So, when we look at the uh, Bibi Fatima Zahra Salaam Alaihi Bibi Fatima Zahra Salaam Alaihi though she was not officially a Nabi, she was not officially an Imam, because she was not assigned these duties of Nubuwa and Imamat, etc. But she has Wilaya, she was one of the Waliyatullah. And that is why you can see the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was treating her as, uh, as his equal. In a way, you know about the fadail of Bibi Fatima Zahra Salaamu Alaiha. I don't want to talk about the fadail of Bibi Fatima Zahra I want to talk about the fadail of Bibi Janabi Zainab Kubra Salaamu Alaiha. But uh, to explain this point, I have to talk about it. Uh, whenever the Prophet of Allah subhanahu uh, whenever uh, Bibi Fatima Zahra Salaamu Alaiha would enter a room where the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sitting, he would stand up. For the in the respect of Bibi Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Alayha. So Allah Now was it was it because of uh, because Bibi Fatima Zahra Salamullah Alayha being a Nabi or Imam etc.? No. She was not an Imam. She was not a Nabi or Nabiya or whatever. She was Waliyatullah. And this is a fadila. This is a fadila. That's why Prophet of Allah SWT would give her so much respect. Fatima to Ummu Abiha, Fatima to Bada'atum Minni, and so on and so forth. So on and so forth. So, Janab Zainab Kubra Salamullah Alayha. She was just second to Bibi Fatima Zaira Salamullah Alayha in fadila. In virtues because of her wilaya, and this is proved from the amal of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. You know, Imam Hussein alayhi salam being one of the Sayyida Shabab Ahlul Jannah, one of the chiefs of Jannah paradise. He was one of the chiefs of paradise. Does he need the dua of um, anybody, any individual? You tell me, does he need a dua, supplication, or anything of an individual, a person? No. 
and it is not mentioned in any of the books or riwayat where Imam would have asked anybody to pray for him, to pray for the Imam. But it, it is mentioned that when Imam Hussain came to say Al-Wida to Bibi Zainab Kubra and other ladies, hmm, he asked especially Janabi Zainab Kubra, O Zainab, O sister, La Tansani fi Salatil Layl. O Zainab, do not forget me in Salatul Layl, in Namazi Sham. So now you, you, you can see how great is the status of this Bibi, you know, this Waliyatullah. Waliyatullah, she was Waliyatullah. Hmm? How great is the status of this Bibi? That Imam himself is asking this Bibi to pray for him. This is just one example. Another example is from our fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abideen alayhi salam. Where our fourth Imam is clearly saying, not hiding anything, is saying that this Bibi is Alimatu Ghayru Mu'allima. And she has not gotten knowledge from anybody directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Her knowledge, her ilm was from directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, it could be through Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, that is another thing. But the knowledge that she possessed was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alimutu ghayr mu'allima, and she did not see any teacher, any other teacher. And she, she used to give the tafsir of uh, Quran, and Imam Ali Islam uh, used to praise her for that. And there's a very mashhoor riwayat, but unfortunately we don't have uh, time. Uh, you can see that she, this Bibi had a great, great status, and this is why Imam is asking her to pray uh, for him. بس تھوڑی سی اور باتیں آپ کے سامنے عرض کرنا چاہتا ہوں اور بات کو ختم کرنا چاہتا ہوں جناب زینب کبرا کا جو کردار ہے آپ دیکھیں کہ جناب زینب کبرا کا ایک لقب ہے عقیل بنی ہاشم عقیل کا مطلب کیا ہوتا ہے ویری وائز سم بڑی ہو ایز اے لاٹ آف عقل عقیل عقیل تو بنی ہاشم جیسے قمر بنی ہاشم ہے جناب عباس مون قمر یعنی مون مون آف بنی ہاشم اسی طرح سے عقیل بنی ہاشم یعنی دا وائز وومن آف بنی ہاشم شی ہیز دس دس فضیلا نو ادر ون نو ادر لیڈی ہیز دس دس فضیلا شی ہیز دس فضیلا اور اس کے بعد جو ہے وہ عالم غیر معلمہ میں نے آپ کے سامنے عرض کیا اور آپ کو پتا ہے کہ کس طرح سے جناب زینب کبرا نے دین کا دفاع کیا ہے یعنی جو دین آج ہمارے پاس ہے جو ابھی یہ مجلس اور محفل میں ہم یہاں پر بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں یہ کس کی وجہ سے یہ کس کے کردار کس کے سیکریفائز کس کی قربانی کی وجہ سے ہم یہاں پر بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں اب بتا امام حسین علیہ السلام شہید ہو کے امام کا جو کام تھا ریسپانسبلٹی اور ڈیوٹی جو بھی تھی وہ پوری ہو گئی اس کے بعد اسلام کو اصل میں بچانے کا کام تو جناب فاطمہ تو زہرا سلام اللہ علیہ کی سوری جناب زینب کبرا سلام اللہ علیہ کا یعنی اگر آپ نہ ہوتی تو امامت ختم ہو جاتی جناب زین العابدین علیہ السلام امام زین العابدین علیہ السلام شہید شہید شاید شہید کر دیے جاتے آپ کہیں گے جو پروٹیکٹر ہے محافظ امامت ہے محافظ امام نہیں محافظ امامت دیر از اے ڈفرنس امامت کو بچایا ہے اس منصب کو بچائے تو اس عظیم لیڈی کی جو ہے اس عظیم خاتون کی بہت بڑی جو ہے وہ قربانیاں ہیں بس آپ جو ہے وہ غور کریں کہ اسی وجہ سے آپ کا ایک لقب بس بات کو ختم کرنا ہوا کہ اسی وجہ سے آپ کا ایک لقب ہے ثانی زہرا ثانی زہرا اس کے بہت سے ٹرانسلیشن ہو سکتے ہیں یعنی کریٹڈ ان دا ایمیج آف زہرا 
or reflection of Zahra. Second to Zahra. بہت سے جو ہے وہ اس کے ترجمے ہو سکتے ہیں اور اس کی وجہ یہ ہے کہ یہی وہ ہیں کہ جو فخر زہرا ہیں پرائڈ آف زہرا ہیں یہی وہ ہیں کہ جن کی وجہ سے دیکھیے جناب زہرا سلام اللہ علیہ نے اپنے دشمنوں سے جا کے کسی طرح سے ڈیبیٹ کیا ڈیبیٹ کی یا جنگ کی جو جو بھی آپ جو ہے وہ کہہ سکتے ہیں فائٹ کرنے کی کوشش کی لیکن ان کی شہادت واقع ہو گئی اور وہ اس مشن کو پورا نہیں کر پائیں تو جس کام کو جناب زہرا سلام اللہ علیہ فاطمہ زہرا سلام اللہ علیہ نے شروع کیا تھا وہ کام جناب زینب کبرا نے جا کے پورا کیا ہے یعنی اصل جو ڈیفیٹ دی ہے بنی امیہ کو اصل جو ڈیفیٹ دی ہے ان ظالموں کو وہ جناب زینب کبرا نے دی ہے جناب فاطمہ تو زہرا سلام اللہ علیہ کی شہادت ہو گئی تھی بیچ میں لیکن اس مشن کو لے کے آگے بڑھی ہے کون جناب زینب کبرا اور اسی وجہ سے یہ ہے کہ جناب فاطمہ زہرا سلام اللہ علیہ تو کہیں گی کہ میں نے بیعت کے سوال کو خالی پچاس سال تک کے لیے پش کر دیا پیچھے کر دیا تھا یعنی ایک مرتبہ بیعت امام علی سے لی گئی تھی تو جناب زہرب جناب فاطمہ زہرا سلام اللہ علیہ کھڑی ہو گئی تھی کہ نہیں یہ نہیں ہو سکتا ہے کہ علی سے تم بیعت لے لو علی سے تم بیعت نہیں لے سکتے ہو نہیں تو میں اپنے بالوں کو کھول دوں گی یا بد دعا کروں گی تو سب جو ہے وہ ڈر کے مارے ہٹ گئے تھے کہ علی کو چھوڑ دیا تھا نہیں تو مولا علی علیہ السلام کو وہیں پر شہید کر دیتے وہ لوگ امام کے گلے میں رسی ڈالی تھی وغیرہ وغیرہ بہت سے آپ کو پتا ہے لیکن وہاں پر سوال ختم نہیں ہوا تھا وہاں پر بیعت کا سوال رکا تھا بس لیکن جناب زینب کبرا جب دوبارہ حسین امام حسین علیہ السلام سے بیعت کا مطالبہ اور بیعت کا سوال ہوا تو یہ جناب زینب کبرا ہے کہ جنہوں نے بیعت کے اس سوال کو ہمیشہ ہمیشہ کے لیے ختم کر دیا کہ پھر کسی کی جرأت دوبارہ نہیں ہوئی کہ کسی امام سے بیعت لے سکے غور کریں کہ کیا فضیلت ہے اس عظیم بیوی کی ان شاء اللہ آج کی اس شب کے سبقے میں اور اس بیوی کے سبقے میں اس ولیت اللہ کے سبقے میں ثانی زہرا کے سبقے میں عقیل بنی ہاشم کے سبقے میں ہم جو ہے وہ خدا عالم کی بارگاہ میں دعا کریں اور اور کہیں کہ پرودی عالم اس بیوی کی شفاعت ہم کو نصیب فرما ہم سے اس مختصر سے حقیر سے ذکر خیر کو قبول فرما اس میں کوئی بھی کمی یا نقص ہو اس کو معاف فرما پانے والے اس عقیل بنی ہاشم کے صدقے میں ہم کو علم عطا فرما اس بن اس عقیل بنی ہاشم کے صدقے میں ہمارے کردار میں اسلامیت کو پیدا فرما پرو دیا ہم کو حقیقی معنوں میں مؤمن اور شیعہ اہل بیت علیہ السلام بننے کی توفیق عطا فرما اور اس عظیم بی بی کی قربانی کا جو نتیجہ ہے وہ سمرا ہے کہ آج ہم یہاں پر موجود ہیں لیکن آج یہی بی بی اسی کا حرم جو ہے وہ سیریا میں آپ کو پتا ہے کہ ظلم کا شکار ہے اور زیارت کرنا مشکل ہے اور بہت سے جو ہے وہ ظالم ہر وقت جو ہے وہ لگے رہتے ہیں کہ کسی طرح سے اس بی بی کے نام کو اور نشان کو مٹا دیا جائے جو ممکن نہیں ہے وہ تو کر نہیں پائیں گے لیکن بہرحال ایک مشکل تو ہے کہ ہم زیارت نہیں کر سکتے شیعہ نے اہل بیت علیہ السلام کو صرف اس لیے شہید کیا جا رہا ہے کہ وہ شیعہ ہیں صرف اس لیے شہید کیا جا رہا ہے کہ وہ اہل بیت کا نام لیتے ہیں صرف اس لیے کافر اور پتہ نہیں کیا کیا بنایا جا رہا ہے کیونکہ وہ اہل بیت کے چاہنے والے تو ہم دعا کریں پرو دگار عالم اہل بیت علیہ السلام کے چاہنے والوں ان کے شیعوں کی حفاظت فرما پانے والے ان کے ان کو ظالموں کے شر سے محفوظ فرما پانے والے ظالموں کو ظالموں کو نیست و نابود فرما اور جلد سے جلد ہمارے زمانے کے امام کو بھیج کر ہم ان کے عوان و انصار میں شمار فرما ربنا تقبل منا ان کا انت السمیع العلیم و آخر و دعوانا ان الحمدللہ رب العالمین